What's up boys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna be doing a breakdown on the scuffle that happened between John Morant and Tony Bradley. Here's a clip of the main sequence that we're gonna discuss about this game, but we're gonna go over what happened beforehand and afterwards. First of all, John Morant wasn't having a great game, still ended up with 25 points, but it was a very physical and quiet 25 points for him. He's getting beaten up by the Bulls and also getting beaten up by his own teammates. Seven footer just landed on his back here. I'm sure that didn't feel great, but this is where the beef between the Grizzlies and Tony Bradley, number 13, begins. Begins. Jaron Jackson is driving to the rim here, but Tony Bradley gives him a hard foul that goes uncalled. Then again, Jaron Jackson and Tony Bradley are getting into it. Tony's kind of doing that T-man pose that everybody does to try to act innocent, but you're nonchalantly sticking out your arm into another man's body. So then from here, the Grizzlies decide they're going to put Tony Bradley on a highlight tape for the wrong reasons. They just kept going at him time and time again. Tony is open for a layup here, but the Grizzlies foul him. They're not going to let him get an easy bucket. And then Tony gives a smile off into the distance. He knows what is going on. Again, John Morant has the ball, but he's looking to go at Tony Bradley. But Tony, in this case, slaps the ball away. It's still the Grizzlies ball. But who do they go at next play? That's right, Tony Bradley. He's going on John Morant's highlight tape. And about a half a minute later, this is where the altercation happens. The thing I noticed off the bat is that Tony Bradley was trying to trip John Morant here. Wasn't a clean trip, so instead he decides to grab John Morant, who probably doesn't want to be grabbed in this case. Tony Bradley won't get off him, so Ja decides to throw the basketball in his face. Now Tony wants to grab onto him even more. This might have been the hottest thing he's ever seen. But this is the real highlight of the entire game. Steven Adams has had enough of it. He is unanimously regarded as the strongest man in the NBA. That motherfucker is strong. He casually picks up 6'10", 250 pound Tony Bradley and carries him off. Here it is again. Tony Bradley just obviously tries to trip him. Tony's trying to slow dance with him, but Ja is really not looking to do this in this situation. And props to Ja. The only weapon that you might have on the court is the basketball and he uses it. Rubs that ball in his face and pushes it off of him. And rubbing the ball on Tony Bradley's face made him a bit more upset. He was grabbing onto Ja even harder at this point. There are several hands on Tony Bradley's arm trying to take him off of Ja Morant but props to Kyle Anderson performing a clean Indian burn on Tony's right arm. That's about all there is to this sequence here. Tony Bradley tried tripping Ja. Ja didn't appreciate that. They did some grabbing and then Steven Adams carried off Tony Bradley like he was a child. Here you can see Ja Morant on the bench saying, I can fight, I can fight for real or something like that. But they ended up giving a technical to Ja Morant and Tony Bradley. And Tony was also given a flagrant foul, which is only the second one of this year. And believe it or not, Tony Bradley has been in the NBA for quite some time now. He's only received one other flagrant foul in his career, which doesn't look dirty at first because he's just grabbing Julius Randle's leg. But when you look into it, it's a lot more dirtier than that. You can tell Julius Randle isn't very happy about him doing this because this is the same leg that Julius Randle broke in his NBA debut. But regardless, they left both of the players in this game and John Morant wasn't done having his way with Tony Bradley. He went right by him and did a 360 layup. And to follow that up, after the Grizzlies called a timeout, John Morant tried doing a between the legs dunk. And then in the post game interview, there were some interesting answers from John Morant. Steven Adams literally picked him up. As he should. And carried him to the other side of the court. As he should. I can be out there on my own, but... Pretty sure everybody see who I be having here. They be courtside, so we wasn't worried. The future of the NBA is looking very talented and entertaining to say the least. But for MLK Day, this is probably not what the King had in mind. But uh, yeah, John Morant shoving his balls in Tony Bradley's face metaphorically and physically. 